Hello friends, today we will be discussing about esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. So before going ahead, I would like to thank Chandana Shri ma'am for sharing the wonderful notes with us and I have attached the link for downloading the notes in the description of the video. So we will start today with tracheoesophageal fistula. So by definition, esophageal atresia is congenital discontinuity resulting in proximal esophageal obstruction and tracheoesophageal fistula is abnormal fistulous communication between esophagus and trachea. It can occur alone or in combination. Now we'll see the embryology. During the fourth week of gestation, when the foregut begins to differentiate into the ventral part, that is the respiratory part and the dorsal part, that is the esophageal part. So during that point, the respiratory part separates from the esophageal part by formation of the lateral tracheoesophageal folds. And these fuse in the midline to form the tracheoesophageal septum. So if these fail to fuse, incomplete fusion or abnormal tracheoesophageal fold will result in abnormal communication between the trachea and the esophagus. It may develop due to disturbance in the epithelial proliferation and apoptosis. Now the epidemiology, it is seen in 1 in 2500 to 3000 live birth and male are slightly more uh, common than female. 1.26 is to 1 is the ratio. Risk of second child with these anomalies is 2% in the second child and 20% with multiple cases and relative risk in twins is 2.26%. What are the environmental factors? The methimazole in early pregnancy, that is anti-thyroid drug, maternal diabetes or thalidomide exposure, chromosomal abnormality like th trisomy 18 or 21. It can be associated with other anomalies and the syndrome is called Vactral, where there is vertebral anomalies in the thoracic vertebra, anorectal anomalies, cardiac anomalies, which are most commonly associated with these tracheoesophageal fistula, and most commonly being ventricular septal defect, then tracheoesophageal fistula, renal anomalies, limb anomalies, that is radial dysplasia. So these are Vactral anomalies, which are associated with tracheoesophageal fistula and trisomy 21 it is associated with duodenal atresia along with tracheomalacia. Another syndrome which we have is the charge syndrome where there is coloboma of the iris, heart defects, atresia of the coena, retarded development, genital hypoplasia and tracheoesophageal fistula. Now you will see the classification or types that is the lad and gross types. So we have A to E the mainly types and so first of all A where there is pure atresia so there will be no communication of the esophagus no uh, communication of esophagus proximal esophagus to the distal esophagus so there will be obstruction it is seen in 7% cases where the proximal is blind ending at the level of the azygous vein in the posterior mediastinum and distal esophagus is a short stump suspended by a fibrous band. There is a gap between the two esophageal ends. Then we will see type B in which the proximal blind end has a abnormal communication with the trachea and the distal part is a blind end. Then C which is the most common where the proximal esophageal part is the blind end and the distal esophageal is communicated to the trachea. This is the most common with 85% incidence among the tracheoesophageal fistula. The proximal esophagus will be dilated, it will be thick and it will be extending up to the superior mediastinum up to T3 or T4 level. Then distal esophagus it enters the trachea posteriorly at the carina or 1 to 2 cm high above. The distance of esophageal end is variable. Then we will see type D where there is 
separate connection between proximal end of the esophagus and distal end of the esophagus. It is the least common and it is type D. Then we have the last that is type E where there is H type, where there is no esophageal atresia but the esophagus is having a fistulous connection with the trachea. So most common is the C type. Then we have A type where there is pure atresia. Then E type where there is H type of fistula formation between the esophagus and the trachea. Now we'll see evaluation. For evaluation, the we will see polyhydromnias in the second week of pregnancy, second half of pregnancy. There will be fluid in the upper pouch and paucity of fluid in the stomach and intestine. Postnatally, there will be drooling of saliva, dyspnea or cyanotic attacks. Use of contrast is not encouraged due to risk of aspiration. Then, we'll, if we see air in the small bowel below the diaphragm, there is a distal connection, distal communication, which is seen in the X-ray. If it is not there, then there is prior atresia or proximal fistula, but no distal fistula. So we have to consider this during the X-ray examination, whether there is air below the diaphragm and the RT will coil from the esophagus, then there will be esophageal atresia. Another important thing is we will use repogal, replogal tube to approximate the length of upper pouch and it will also help us in evacuating the contents. We will also evaluate for other malformations. Then management, immediate insertion of the oro or nasoesophageal replogal tube that will help us in continuous or intermittent aspiration of the saliva to prevent aspiration. The patient baby should be nursed in propped up position. Intubation or ventilation in case of respiratory distress, pneumonia or other severe malformation. The ET tube must cross beyond the fistulous opening to avoid inconvenience. Then after proper resuscitation, we will go for surgery. We will go for extra pleural approach and thoracic repair, thoracoscopic repair may also be done. Most commonly when there is normal aortic arch, we will go ahead with right dorsolateral thoracotomy and in case of a right arch, we will go for left thoracotomy. Here we will go ahead with division of the azygous vein, proximal and distal ends of the esophagus will be dissected and mobilized. Fistulous tract will be divided and the defect will be repaired. The tract is divided near the trachea and we'll try for primary esophagus anastomosis. In case of lengthening procedure, we'll go ahead with circular or spiral myotomy with mucosal muscular flap. In case of a large gap, we may have to tag the proximal pouch to the prevertebral fascia and we have, may need to do cervical esophagostomy with gastrostomy. We may need a gastric transposition or colonic interposition. Then we have spits or water stun prognostic classification for prognos prognosis where it is divided into three in decreasing order of the survival possibility where one is when the weight is more than 1.5 kg and there is no cardiac malformation the survival is 95 percent in second one when the weight is less than 1.5 kg or there is cardiac malformation the survival is 60 percent and in third where the weight is less than 1.5 kg and there is cardiac malformation the survival is around 22 percent then for type E fistula, 
that is the H type, we'll go for the neck approach for repair. Then we'll go for complication, that is aspiration resulting in pulmonary distress, anastomotic leak leading to mediastinitis. These are both are the early complication. Then again, fistula formation, anastomotic stricture or tracheomalacia, which are the late uh, risk, uh, complication. Other one of the most common complication of these surgery and condition is gastroesophageal reflux, which is very common amongst 50 to 70 percent cases. So this was all about tracheoesophageal fistula. Hope it has been understood and keep studying, keep growing. We'll see you in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching.